Hey YouTube, welcome to part 16 of the front end loader build. We're getting close to the end of it now, and I'm about to hook up the hydraulics. I procrastinated this job a little bit because I was a bit concerned about uh, cutting into the lines, where it's going to happen, how to do it. I finally figured that out, and we're about to finish it off. So let's get on with the job. Here's the black metal fitting for the hydraulics. It was just a straight sleeve that length and I put it in the vise in the drill press and I've run an annual cutter down there. The size of the outside diameter of the return pipe for the hydraulics. Because I haven't really got room to put a T-piece in, so I'm not going to cut the pipe and put it in. I'm going to weld this onto the pipe on the outside, and then I'm going to run a annular cutter down the centre of it to cut into the pipe and make the opening that way. Then I'll connect the return fitting from the front end loader control to this. Now that's the pump for the hydraulics just there. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can get a relative position of it just underneath the alternator. This top fitting here, I've just loosened these three bolts here. That's the return pipe from the pump for the low pressure. The bottom fitting here is the high pressure pipe. I've already cut into that in the other video. You can have a look at that if you'd like to see what I did there. Now I'm going to cut into this low pressure pipe. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to take the whole pipe off because there's no way that I can get in there to TIG that while it's sitting in place. So I mark where I want to put it. This is a piece I'm putting in. It's going to go up in underneath the battery, somewhere close underneath the battery. I think it'll be the best spot for it. But I've got to take the whole pipe off to do that. Okay, that's just on the uh, underneath the steering wheel part of the tractor. I'll just go up there, there's a steering wheel, comes straight down from that. You can see that the big pipe there, not the small one underneath the pressure pipe, the big one above is the return pipe, and that's the one I'm going to cut into. It's held in there with a saddle. I've taken the nut off the saddle. Then the only other thing I've got to do is get underneath the tractor and undo that. And before I can do that, I'm going to drain all the oil out because as soon as I take that return pipe off, I think the oil's going to pour out everywhere. So I'm going to take the drain plug out and get the oil out of the tractor first. Well, I can't really say I'm surprised, but I got both ends of the pipe off and there's no way it's coming out of where it's threaded through. I'm going to have to take the mudguard off and then the footrest off. Then it'll come out. <sighs> Life wasn't meant to be easy, they say. They were dead right. I got that done The six screws that hold the mudguard on and the four that hold this little running board on. Oh dear, what have we got hooked up there? Hey, what was there? Nothing. Got some wires going nowhere. No idea what that'd be about. Since the tractor's running, I'm not going to worry about it, but ideally I suppose I should go and have a look at the service manual and just see what they're supposed to do. Anyway, now that I've got this out, I ought to be able to track this somehow. Still don't think it's going to be an easy job, but it should be at least doable now. So far, so good. There he is out. And I've still got my mark where I want to TIG that fitting to. I hope you can see that, I hope that's in shot. There's an O-ring around this where it goes into the back of the tractor and another one in the front. So just be careful you don't lose them. I'm going to get them out in a minute and put them somewhere safe until after I've finished welding. Okay, well that's the return pipe now and I have welded that piece in. I'll just zoom in on it and I'll show you. Now I didn't show you the welding of that, A, because it would have been tedious for you to watch and B, because it would have been embarrassing for me to know you're watching it. I have said in the past I'm no good at the out of position welding, so I actually did that in about 8 to 10 goes, just a little bit of the time around the circumference and I moved it into the best position for me to work on in between each go. Anyway, it's worked well. It's got a nice solid bead. I went around it several times to make sure I built up enough weld. I know it's not under pressure. It's only, I don't know, it might be 200 psi, something of that order for the return. Might not even be that much. But I don't want it leaking anyway, so I built plenty of weld up to make sure that I'd covered it properly. As I say, about three passes over it, which I know is way overkill. 
At least now I know that it's going to be right and I don't have to pull the thing off again because once it's back there, it's a mongrel to get out. I don't want to have to do it again. When I was welding, was, even though I drained the tube pretty well first, there was copious amounts of smoke coming out of there and I actually heard a bit of a fire going on inside the tube so I'm guessing there's enough oil there to cause issues and I'm expecting there to be a lot of oil soot in that tube now which I want to get out before I put it back on. First effort I guess would be to pour a bit of acetone down there, see if it can, that'll loosen it up and the next thing would be to drag a rag through there, put it on the end of a piece of fishing line, poke that through and then drag the rag through on the fishing line just to make sure I get all that rubbish out of there because I don't want to go back into my hydraulic reservoir. That's what I'm about to do now. Now I just tried to show the details of this with a flat torch battery but now we've got a good torch, ah oh, that's much better we can see. You can see a lip down in there where I put an annular cutter through the wall of the pipe. It was a 15mm annular cutter. Now just looking at that lip there, I probably might have got away with 17mm. Certainly could have got away with 16mm, but I don't think that matters. I think that that will be plenty of flow for what it has to do. It's just a return. The idea is to keep the uh, pressure really low, so you want as much flow as you can get, but I think that'll be okay because we're going to have even bigger bottlenecks in other areas. Like that is only 15 millimetres, and down this end is also only 15 millimetres, so I don't think having a 15 millimetre bottleneck in there is going to make any real difference to the flow of it, even though the pipe's a little bit bigger than 15. We've got bottlenecks at both ends. If you look down in there, you can see the weld. Just sort of penetrated through the wall of the pipe a little bit, but I didn't blow any holes in it, so I'm really happy about that. As you can see, this is quite a thick part that I had to weld on there, and it's a very thin wall tube. I don't, you might be able to see that down in there. It's less than a millimetre thick, the tube, so I had to concentrate all the heat on the heavy part and just have the edge of the TIG torch touching the pipe, just enough to melt the pipe and let the bead flow into it. Worked out really well. I'm quite happy with it. It is a bit nerve-wracking if you're not a really terrific TIG welder and I don't count myself as a terrific TIG welder, I can sort of just get by with it. So if you're not real competent with it, I suggest you take it somewhere and get someone who can TIG weld properly to do that for you. Anyway, there it is. It was worrying me a little bit because as I say I was a bit concerned that I might have blown a hole in the pipe and wrecked it and then I was a bit concerned about how I'd get another pipe there, but it's all good. So I ran out of time to finish this the other day. I'm back here today to do it. I just want to recap where we're at. This is the return pipe. That end goes onto the pump. I've welded this fitting in here to make a T-piece to take the return from the controller. And that end there goes back into the transmission because this particular tractor shares its oil between the transmission and the hydraulics. That's the pump in there and this is where that front piece goes on. Which is quite enlightening because you notice there's three bolt holes there. And I took three bolts out of it, but there's four bolt holes down there. So that makes me wonder whether this is an original part. Anyway, it did seem to work, didn't leak, so came off, it'll go back on. So that's the next step, put that in. Now don't forget to put the O-rings back on because that's all that's going to protect it from leaking. Threading back through. Came off easier than it's going back on, that's for sure. Times like this where you wish you had little kids again that had small hands to get into these places. As usual, things that came out a lot easier than they want to go back in. Oh yes, that's much easier. I hope you can see what I'm trying to show you here. I got this extension for the socket, and I got the socket where I just sat it in the end there so I could kink it, and it would go around a little bit like a universal joint. I could have the extension off centre and still have the socket straight, and that was what allowed me to get it in so easily. Otherwise, I think I'd be here for the next few hours trying to get it in. Excuse the rain, there's showing no signs of letting up, so I'll do this and if the sound doesn't come out too good, I'll do a voiceover when I edit it. I've got all the hydraulics connected now. That's the power beyond fitting from the control. 
and this line goes down here to a female connector and it will go on to this male connector here which goes back to the three-point lift. This hose here coming out of the bottom down here also goes to a female connector. I've got a rubber buffer on that to stop rubbish getting into it. Now that's the return line. It's a little bit heavier. It's a half inch fittings on it instead of three eighths because I want as little back pressure on it as I can get. Coming around to the front here, this is the pressure in to the controller out of that front port and it goes down here to a male fitting. And coming off the pump here, I'll just try and get in so you can see that. I've got a 45 degree bend onto the pipe fitting on the fluid pump. I've cut this pipe in another video. And then that goes down to a hose which goes down here and that has a female end on it. This female end will either go onto here to power the front end loader or back onto that one to complete the circuit just for the three point lift. This female connector will never be unconnected for anything. And that male collector there will never be unconnected. It will either be connected to the, directly to the pump or it will be connected to the power beyond. I'll just get them hooked up and then I'll show you them where they sit. All right, well, this is him all connected up now. Uh, let's start at the pump end. Onto the pump, fitting through the 45 degrees, out into the hose, up through here, through the quick attach connectors, up there and into the inlet port on the controller. Then we go here, this top port is the power beyond and it goes down through a 90 degree elbow, up curls around the front there and comes back to power the three point hitch. And then this bottom port, again through a 90 degree elbow, comes down and it goes around underneath the keel, comes back up here and into this piece which I cut into the return line. I eyeballed that at 45 degrees out of there, thinking that that would be okay, and it's actually not real good. I should have gone down closer to 60 degrees. I don't think I can get a 15 degree elbow, so I might be kind of stuck with it, but this hose here has just got a little bit more bend on it than I'd like. But I think it'll be okay nevertheless. And that's it. I just have to put some of that protective sleeve around these hoses where they're rubbing. It's all good to go. I think everything should be in shot there. We'll give it a go. I'm just using my foot here to put some weight on the three-point hitch to make sure that's working via the power beyond. And then, as you can see, the loader arms are working perfectly. The front rams are out of camera shot, but I tested them as well, and they're doing exactly what I wanted them to do. Very happy with it. I should also apologise for my voice. I've come down with a little bit of a cold, but as I say, the show must go on. I hope it doesn't come out too badly on the tape. Woo! Big fun! Don't look half bad, either. I am pretty happy with that. Now I've got to finish the bucket, so we can't try it out just yet. But it won't be long now. All done, real good, man happy. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Next week's video will cover the bucket side of the quick attach fitting. If you'd like to see more of my projects, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.